Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Is how is the um, the music compared to the voice? Join the chat for comments, please, and then I can react to any questions, suggestions, and so forth. And especially important, um, if you can't hear anything or if the music is too loud, uh, anything like that. Thanks very much. So let's see if this works. Aha, uh -huh, it does. Right. <coughs> Pathmire is basically a fantasy role-playing game with the difference that all the protagonists' PCs are um, anthropomorphized dogs. They are, have been uplifted, so they usually walk on two legs, um, have evolved hands and fingers so they can use tools and weapons, um, they have developed speech, and have formed over time um, a functioning society. Um, strictly speaking, um, the world of Pakmaya is a post apocalyptic setting. Um, in the very, very distant future, there was the world we are now used to. And um, And then something happened. Um, what exactly this apocalypse or uh, some other catastrophe was that caused man to disappear is not specified. That is something each GM can make up as they go along. And um, actually, I should say each guide, as the game master is called in, in Padmaya. Um, uh, but at some point, man disappeared, and not too long before that happened, uh, they uplifted uh, a number of animals. Firstly, dogs, as um, they gave them intelligence, the capability to speak a language, language man, and uh, to help them be a bigger part of society. After man disappeared, the dogs and also the other uplifted animals like cats and rats and lizards and badgers um, had to fend for themselves and slowly but surely uh, build up uh, a world and a setting of their own. And um, as the game starts, um, they have created a society and a technology level uh, that is comparable to medieval times. So um, simple machines, uh, wooden and brick houses, um, and that sort of thing. Um, so, like many other uh, fantasy settings, um, there are still traces 
of old things man has left behind. Um, so they're buried ruins, um, and every now and then um, there will be artifacts called masterworks can be found, which are a, in the game mechanic treated as uh, magic items, but are in the actuality technology. So there is like the goggles of night vision are um, what we would call you now night vision goggles uh, technology. So it's, it's not some strange magic, but it is technology. Obviously, the dogs don't know any better, and the um, uh, the old saying applies that any uh, any sophisticated technology is indistinguishable from magic, and that uh, applies here as well. Um, the sort of the the, the, the center of um, the world of Pagmaya is the city of Pagmaya. Uh, set along the river, there are uh, mountains in the north, um, most of which are uh, undiscovered, unexplored, and uh, which is base of a lot of adventures you can uh, play and run in Pagmaya because that is the whole uh, the whole setup uh, is to uh, explore and expand the world um, beyond the river you have the fearful forest which is can be dangerous um, and so not many dogs care uh, to go there and far beyond the forest is uh, the monarchies of Mao the kingdom of cats um, a few generations ago uh, there was a huge war between cats and dogs uh, many casualties on both sides um, but eventually uh, a truce uh, was reached and the, uh, the, the the forest was set up as uh, a sort of border. There are, as time has progressed, there are some uh, trade uh, and, and, and uh, other exchanges has been happening, um, but mostly the cats uh, and the dogs are wary of each other. Um, there's a, a slight, uh, except for Pathmire itself, uh, which has, let me find the, the uh, city map. Um, which has uh, one quarter of the city where, uh, where a lot of cats live. No. Mm, can just go into rule. Ah, oh, here we are. A circle, river called rural quarter or cat quarter. Um, Dave. Uh, Again, as I mentioned, um, the cats tend to uh, stick to each other and dogs are a bit wary of them and vice versa. That's why they were offered uh, a quarter to themselves. Um, in uh, the other quarters, uh, the, the Westworld quarter is um, basically sort of more to the administrative uh, district and also uh, there's the Royal Library for example, there's the chapel 
uh, the major uh, the major church uh, we got in the church uh, I'll have a note on that later the North Gray quarter is the merchants quarter and the miners quarter uh, the, the miners quarter sorry um, the South Gray quarter is the uh, merchants quarter and the markets so the uh, the large souk is the biggest market but there are shops and uh, anything you want you can find there because that is uh, the, the road in the south uh, leads to Water Talk Port, which is uh, the major port in the area where trade is done to mysterious lands from across the, uh, the ocean where um, the lizards come from. And um, and then we have the rural quarter, which is home to cats, also rats, and the I don't want to say dregs of society, um, but it is a uh, somewhat darker yeah, slummer sl uh, slum type area where uh, criminals hide and the uh, you have another um, uh, market which is the grey souk which mysteriously appears at night where you can find um, goods that might either be frowned upon in daylight or uh, have had previous owners without them giving them up that sort of thing <laughs> Um, then uh, I already mentioned uh, there are um, there's a, there's a road that leads to the north to the mountains uh, where the big plastic mines are um, plastic is the gold of Patmaya um, it is uh, mined from um, ruins uh, old ruins and um, because there is, there are a few um, precious metal, not enough precious metal to actually make a currency from, they decided we use plastic both as a valuable and also as a reminder of uh, the age of man because man gave us this wonderful life. Um, in the south, as I mentioned, there is Walter Talk Port, uh, and then the areas around uh, the city aren't really that detailed in the book. It's there are a few villages and so forth. So um, the world is pretty much set up as um, a sandbox for the guide to come up with their own ideas of what to put where, um, and so forth. So, so there's there's some there's some structure given in the book, um, but mostly it is um, about it's it's an open world. Um, so let's go and have a look at the characters. Um, a good dog. Oh yes, this is something else I wanted to mention. It is the code of man. Um, this is the tent. The uh, dogs live by, um, handed down from uh, the writings of man and being propagated by the church. Um, the main one is be a good dog. What that actually means is open to inter interpretation, but generally is be good, be kind, help others along the lines. Obey the master, again, is an inter interpretive uh, thing because you now dogs used to be 
uh, the, the man used to be the master of dogs, but now it's more like uh, whoever's in charge says what goes. Um, but only those who endanger you, again, quite obvious, uh, don't do harm if it's not necessary and, and if it's not uh, not endanger anyone else. Defend your home, stay loyal to those that are true. Um, Again, this is sort of wishy-washy a bit because you know you can uh, define true. Each each dog will define true as a certain uh, bracket. Um, then uh, protect all from the unseen. Um, this is an interesting one. Um, you know, uh, anyone who has a a dog or maybe even a cat uh, or other pets, pets, they will suddenly stare at something or bark at something nobody else can see and um, man wasn't able to see it but dogs used to be able to see it and still see it and uh, this was um, taken into the game as the the major enemy um, they are um, scary things they are monsters they are corrupted or possessed uh, animals and um, other things that have maybe that have been uh, corrupt over the over the, uh, the past millennium millennia and this is the unseen this is uh, one of the major enemies of uh, dogs and uh, finally fetch what it has been left behind is to clean anything you can possibly can from the world of man uh, be it uh, masterworks magic items um, be it writing um, anything that can help the society to grow. Um, I think that uh, should give you a good idea of um, the setting. So um, a bit about uh, the game. The uh, the rules are based on uh, the same base rules as Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition. So there's a lot of things. If, you, if, you, if you're used to D&D uh, &D 5th edition, uh, this game is going to be easy for you. Uh, if not, it's going to be easy to pick up because it's... It works like D&D, but it's a bit more simplified. Uh, there are a few options you can do. Um, you can set. Um, and so base roll is a D20 plus whatever modifier you have from your uh, stat, from your uh, ability, and maybe a skill. Um, and so you have you know, strength, dex, constitu uh, strength, dexterity, constitution, Intelligence, wisdom, and charisma work exactly the same way. Um, most of the things work exactly the same way in uh, in Pac-Man as they do in D and D. They're just slightly, some are worded slightly different. So, for example, you've got defense instead of armor class. You've got stamina points instead of hit points, and similar things. Um, a few skills have been renamed as well so for example if i look at uh, this kind of jack rat terrier um, um he has um bluff which is sort of the equivalent of deception um, sneak which is stealth steel which is sleight of hand and traverse which is sort of the equivalent of, of athletics with the difference that traverse is based on constitution instead of uh, strength. So there are some things that are slight different, 
which makes um, running, if you want, for example, to use Roll20, which I'm going to show you in a bit, uh, a bit tricky because um, the, there is not yet um, a character sheet in Roll20 for Pugmire. Um, I believe they are trying to get one and have one made. Um, at least that was um, part of the um, Kickstarter goals. Uh, but so far, I don't think they've actually found someone who was, would be able to do that. So if you know anyone, uh, get in touch. Um, so, um, briefly, uh, about, um, the, uh, kind of so the, um, attacks, again, uh, very similar to, um, um, d and saving throws, but exactly the same way. Skills are... Again, each skill is based on an ability. Um, then you have personality traits, again similar to the ones in uh, in D and D. Um, and finally, you have tricks. And tricks are the what's called uh, roughly what's called features in in D and D. So it's Everything that isn't a skill. Um, so, for example, Chuck here has a uh, simple weapon aptitude, light armor aptitude. Um, they are proficiencies. Then, uh, precise attack works the same way as sneak attack. In, uh, then, you've got uh, voracious learner, which means um, it, it gives him an advantage on the intelligence roll to find out to remember something he's heard of. And then uh, Friends in Low Places, which is, uh, it gives you, again, advantages uh, in uh, a certain part of society. So each, each background, uh, again, similar backgrounds to the D&D, &D, uh, each background has one of those um, connection tricks. Um, so if you are in that part of society where you come from, then uh, you get bonuses on certain uh, actions and things. Um, so let's go through the uh, various options, I think. Um, Again, based uh, similar to D&D, um, &D. Uh, there are no, <coughs> there are callings, which is your job. Um, artisans are um, spellcasters. Um, they are focus spellcasters, so the rough equivalent of wizards. Guardians are fighters and have elements of paladins. So um, hunters are uh, rangers, roughly. Um, ratters are rogues, again, roughly. They do similar things. Um, shepherds are the clerics. Uh, so they also do um, have um, a spellcasting ability, which is faith-based. Um, while the uh, the artisans' um, spellcasting ability is focus-based. So, um, uh, as I mentioned, there's, I, there are many things are slightly simplified. So um, there are no spell components, for example. Um, but instead, the uh, an artisan needs um, uh, needs a focus, which is an item of sorts that has 
some value. It's not necessarily a magic item in itself, so it doesn't do anything, but it is, um, uh, but the artisan needs that item to focus the magic through it. Shepherds, again, uh, they have the holy symbol, which you can see here, um, the, the symbol of the uh, Church of Man is this uh, downwards pointing hand. And then, um, and the final one are strays. And strays are roughly barbarians. Um, they have a similar features. They have rage, for example, and uh, they are uh, fearless fighters and um, so forth. So, for example, um, if you look at their tricks. Uh, so, they've got the deed well for uh, um, stamina, um, prime abilities, constitution, and strength. And. Um, and they've got lots of weapon aptitudes uh, and armor aptitudes, and then you have um, rage and un unarmored defense. Bavarian. Um, the um, the creation method is where you um, assign fixed values, so rather than uh, rolling for stats or uh, point by, uh, you've got the the fixed values. Um, then you have breeds. Breeds are um, sort of the races, and but they they determine what a dog can do rather than be strictly uh, based on. Um, a natural uh, dog breed. Um, they give examples uh, for companions. Um, companions are you know, used to be lap dogs um, and so forth, but they um, they tend to have good good charisma. They tend to have um, good social and action skills. Um, and this is one um, major point the um, the authors make is you don't if you say okay I want to play a husky that doesn't automatically mean the breed is going to be a hunter but you can play a husky that has um, the elements of a um of a companion yeah it's might be a bit big for uh, a laptop but you know it's a it's a friendly dog who uh, gets on with other dogs and could get on well with other dogs and, and people so there you go um so this is uh, you you're not um fixed on uh, the Breed. Uh, it's just that the look of a dog isn't fixed uh, to the breed. Um, so um, there are uh, there are companions, there are fettles, um, there are herders, uh, uh, pointers, uh, runners, workers, and mutts. Um, Again, they have sort of each has now their their um, ability bonuses. Uh, like runners have dex bonus, pointers, wisdom, uh, pointers, um, um, intelligence, um, herders, wisdom, um, um, fettles, constitution, and so forth. Uh, and then there are mutts. Mutts are. Um, mixes, uh, yeah, mutts. They are pure bread, um, and they work like uh, humans in D and D. So you can uh, 
give them, you know, get, get, they get plus one to any two uh, ability score and that sort of thing. Um, the slight difference is um, Dark Society in Pugmire is breed, pay, breed based. So um, the uh, mutts are seen as the lesser members of society. Um, it's uh, now some. Is it, do, do you think? Uh, do you think that now some some dogs are uh, better than others? Um, in um, so in in society, uh, mutts are the lowest rank. So most of the mutts will. Uh, might not even live in in Pukmaya, but uh, it was a a while ago. Um, um, well, a rather prominent uh, mud set up uh, a separate town just across the river on, on the edge of the forest, um, where where muds can live as equals, and uh, they live quite happily there. Uh, a small town, uh, one village, and um, they act as guides through the forest uh, and similar things. But if you want to play a mat, there isn't uh, a problem because the um, the way it is set up, which doesn't necessarily mean that you need to follow that, but the way it is set up, um, the uh, the player characters are. Uh, members of the Royal Pioneers and the Royal Pioneers uh, is a uh, a group that was set up uh, to uh, explore the world um, they have good status and they will take on uh, sort of a a bit like a foreign legion, so they will uh, take on anything who is prepared to uh, better themselves and follow the rules, and it doesn't matter where they come from. And that's why mud are uh, offered as an as an uh, an option for player characters, despite them being not so great um, in. Uh, now, not regarded as uh, important in society. Um, the what else is there? If I go to oh yes, um, fortune. Um, this is an, an element that is similar, uh, sort of the base is a bit similar to um, inspiration in D&D, &D. Uh, but the difference is that uh, it is not individually individual based, but the fortune bowl, so uh, the bowl with the fortune counters in it, um, is a, a group pool. Uh, every PC can access. Um, you start, and, and also the difference with two inspiration is that you start the game uh, with already two points of in, in, in the fortune pearl. Um, and there are various ways you can use fortune, which is um, for reroll on any die in a uh, in an action, so that that could be uh, the ability roll, or that could be the damage die, or it could be um, a stamina die when you're trying to heal yourself, uh, and some other things. Um, the um, spellcasters can spend a, uh, a fortune to cast a spell even if the spell slot expe is expended. And then there are certain um, certain tricks 
that require fortune. There's a certain later high power, high power tricks that require fortune. Um, you, the group gains fortune by role playing to their personality traits, by you know uncovering. Uh, important plot points by making everyone laugh and this is obviously uh, all the uh, the guides uh, prerogative when and how they um, they hand out fortune um, but that's just the the rough idea and um, so there's there's always an element uh, in it that is a bit more when luck runs out, you still have something to uh, prop yourselves up on, and there might still be some fortune left that can get you out of uh, some hairy situations, um, especially as it should, you know, uh, should refill every now and then during a session. Um, what else? Um, I think those are the basics. Um, of the system. I don't want to get too, t too deep into it, but um, as I mentioned, uh, if you're used to D&D, &D, then it's simple. And if you don't, if, you, if you're new to role playing, it should be a lot easier uh, to get into uh, the system than D and D is because there's there are few options, um, so it's it's not this overwhelming amount of information you need to uh, keep track of. Um, and so, I think we'll just uh, do a little character in, in roll twenty. Um, the uh, the book itself comes with uh, six pre-made characters, uh, which is great. Um, and they are, again, that's a recently published um, Uh, recent published supplement called uh, The Secret of Vincent's Tomb, which is both a uh, scenario, it has, uh, it's sort of a bit of a, a player's guide, so it has um, basic rules, but uh, without uh, specific lists of skills and uh, spells and so forth. For that, you need a big book. Um, Um, but it has a, a rules overview uh, with the various roles you need to make, the, um, how hit, um, stamina points work, uh, how magic works, and that sort of thing. And then it has a, a, a list of uh, pre-generated characters. Um, they are the same as they uh, as in the main rule book, um, but they are um, a bit more elaborate. They are small backstory uh, to them. And they have a a proper character sheet attached. Uh, whereas the um, the ones in the, in the basic rule book only have basically their their scores listed. Um, if you look in the book, it's it's just a page each. And that's not you know, that helpful to, to play with. You need to transfer it to a character sheet. So uh, when they came up with the, uh, the Secret of Vincent's Tomb, um, they uh, provided full character sheets, which is great and helpful and uh, useful. Um, so I'm going to uh, transfer Leo into Roll20. Um, I set up a game, I use the um, Wizards, uh, the SRD document 
uh, on Wizards of the Coast because the e the basics are the same um, in, in 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 of D and D. So if I open Leo Bulldog. Strength is 15, Dix is 12, Constitution is 15, Intelligence is 8. Not that bright, but hmm, yeah, you have to have one dumb stat. Uh, wisdom is 10, Charisma is 14. Uh, these have the um, breed modifiers already built in. His um, primary abilities are Strength and Charisma. And his skills are Intimidate. Ah, this is one of those I need to add. Because in in D and D intimidation is based on charisma, but in Pugmire it is based on strength. Um, notice is the same as perception so it's based on uh, wisdom um so why check a handy table survive is based on wisdom yep and um, Traverse is sort of the equivalent of athletics, but it's based on constitution, which I actually like, because if you're, you know, if you're climbing uh, a long ladder or a difficult bit of uh, mountain, then uh, constitution stamina is more important than strength. So that, that I think that's quite a good idea. So that's Traverse. And it's built on Constitution. Okay. Um, ah! Uh -huh. This is not a text. This is unfortunate. So let's take these from... Rulebook. Um, rulebook, by the way, the PDF. Uh, uh, so uh, all three files I have here. No, the two files: the Padma Core Rulebook and the Secret of Vincent's Tomb is available on Drive Through RPG. Uh, I think the rulebook is around fifteen dollars, and the Secret of Vincent's Tomb is three dollars. Um, so it's quite nicely priced. Um, I have the backer copy of a new file, uh, which is called the uh, Pants Guide and New Monk Pioneers, that came out on Friday. Uh, so it's brand new, and only backers, have, Kickstarter backers, have it. Um, this is again um, a player's guide. But there's a, a new scenario which explains rules as they come up in uh, the scenario. So this is great for, um, especially great for um, new GMs, new guides who uh, don't quite know uh, 
how they should go about uh, running a game, running a scenario. So you've got uh, the scenario interspersed with this is how you do this, this is how you do, this is how you do that, and so forth. Um, um, this is in basically beta stage. Uh, the um, Kickstarter backers have been given access and uh, we were asked to um, point out any errors that might be in it or uh, give suggestions to improve sections and so forth. Um, so this should be available in another month or two. Uh, then it will be uh, generally available on uh, Drive for RPG as well. Um, there is a, um, a there's a print run as well. A beautiful hard Mac book, um, really nicely put together. Uh, that's a bit more pricey, uh, obviously, uh, but it's really high quality, and you should be able to order that through uh, your local game store. Um, and obviously the various um, online outlets. The uh, the print on demand option on drive through is probably not the best uh, value uh, because there is a proper um, print run. Uh, but as I said, the, the the actual book is is really nicely put together. Um, right, so we were doing a character. So, who's ideal? The Bond, I'm inspired by my Bond to Yosha Puck, who is my conscience. Uh, Yosha Puck is the, um, the artisan of the group. And um, she's also related to the um, royal family of Pagmaya. Um, um, so Pugs are have been have been ruling um, Pagmaya for many generations, um, and uh, the main reason why it's Pugs is because um, Eddie Webb, the main author. He's a huge fan of Pugs and used to have two <laughs> as pets. You always have to yeah, put in something personal in anything you write. And his flaw is, no matter what, I just can't overlook injustice. Mm. So now yeah, he will also go um, after his um, friends, if not, uh, or at least now. Yeah point out their failings. <laughs> so, what tricks has he got? Um, sticks and weapon aptitudes, which I'm not going to put in because it takes a bit long. Um, that's a fighting style two weapon. Last thing, and that comes from the Guardian. And Fighting style, dueling style, great weapon style, protection style, two fight, two weapon fighting style. When wielding two light weapons, add your ability modifier and your proficiency bonus to the damage. So this is quite nice. This counts as one attack. And uh, so the players have it available. I'll just copy that into the character sheet. Uh, next up is 
How the constitution? Oh, actually, it comes from. Ah, it's a fettle trick, so that's a breed trick. Ah, yes, you add a, a d4 to all constitution saving throws. And finally, rank us as privileges. This is one of those um, social uh, ones, um, as Leo Bulldog. Um, he used to be a soldier, and so he um, used to be uh, so that the background is soldier, and he uh, used to be uh, a member of the city watch, and that's what gives him uh, that trick. Hmm. So that's the background one. So in, in this specific one is the dog can access to can access to friendly gain access to friendly comments and arms as well as gather common information and rumors from among the rank and file. Not secret military plans, of course, uh, but and you can play uh, pay a fortune and make an NPC you just met uh, an old friend or companion or someone you know really well. So this is really useful. Hey, it's Bernie Bernese. We used to hang out in the city watch together. How are you, old man? And that sort of thing. And uh, that's pretty much done. Uh, so he's a fighter. Background the soldier. Uh, oh, there is no alignment in Pugmire. And his breed is fetal, I think. Yeah, breed is fetal. Uh, his speed is. Okay. Um, oh, the interesting um, thing is that while dogs uh, can walk on two legs, when they run, they go on all fours. <laughs> uh, proficient bonus is two. Uh, initiative is one. Yep. Stamina dice. One. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Uh, oh my gosh, isn't quite right because I haven't put in the proficiencies, but I'm not doing that now. Uh, or rather, the equipment. Um, the equipment, uh, so weapon stats, as far as I've seen. Uh, are pretty much the same um, so um, you can use the um, GSOD database from Roll20 to do that um, he has I he got short sword heavy armor he has got plate mail so let's see if that works Uh, 
Build a new plate armor. I know it's armor does 18, so there might be a difference. I need to check how that is calculated. Um, it's, I mean, you can always, yeah, change that in in roll 20, and um, hopefully um, there will be a uh, proper um, character sheet for Pop Maya soon, so you don't have to fiddle around with it too much. Um, I. I think um, that's sort of it. Um, I can give you a, a short uh, intro to the world, uh, what the various dogs can do. Um, I give you probably some some idea on, uh, of what's going on. Um, the um, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the um, the world is, it has some base, so the most, uh, the most detailed information is about the city itself. Uh, there isn't a lot of information uh, about, you know, just really general things uh, about the, uh, the, land, the countryside, the lands around um, Papamaya. Uh, so, um, the gem is, the guide is pretty much uh, free to create whatever, um, whatever they they uh, they find useful and find interesting, and um, so they can make the game that suits them and their players um, perfectly. Um, as I mentioned, there is uh, one uh, the the book itself as a scenario in the back has lots of various. Uh, plot hooks as well. Um, there is a uh, a monster manual se section on it, which you know give you ideas of how to use various uh, opponents and enemies. Um, so the the book itself contains uh, everything really you need. Um, um, the uh, I think the the, the, the planned uh, books are now out or will be uh, will be out very soon. So there was the uh, the Secret of Winston's Tomb as an introductory scenario, and the uh, Pan's Guide to uh, New Pioneers uh, again as a scenario and uh, player's guide. Um, there will be. Uh, as time goes on, there will be more books uh, of the overarching uh, world. So, uh, what, is, what has already been funded and which is in its um, final developing stages is uh, the Monarchies of Mao, which is a game in, uh, a game in itself, uh, fully self-contained game, uh, but with cats, uplifted cats, as the main player characters. And they will also have rules with um, how you can mix and match um, uh, cats and dogs uh, in, 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 in your game. Um, I believe Eddie, uh, Eddie Webb, the, the, the main author, has, has recently run uh, a scenario uh, but, uh, at the convention based on that. And other things are in the vague pipeline. I believe that Andy was looking at uh, to do rats at some point as the next major um, playable, maybe playable, or at least as the major as a as a source book on rats. Um, um, rats are quite interesting. Rats are well; they are the usual rats. Most most of the rats are criminals, <laughs> and there are also uh, rats that have formed a secret society. Uh, I don't want to mention them too much because the, my 
my first scenario I'm intending to run of this is as those rats, that's a good society of rats as the main um, antagonist. Um, so yeah, um, if you if you're interested in that, uh, I will most likely run this as an online game because I've run that particular scenario uh, with uh, uh, actual people at conventions and at uh, uh, local meets uh, a few times. Um, and so this is probably going to be on uh, as an, as an uh, online game and streamed on Twitch at some point soon uh so if you if you're interested in that uh message me and i uh, can include include you in the in the in the players um so um that's pretty much it um if there's anything else um make comments on the post and i'll uh, export this to youtube as well uh so you can make comments there and um We'll see if that uh, was of interest to people, because now uh, yeah, I've, I've not really done this before, and I just thought, okay, I want to because I really, really like this game, and uh, I just wanted to reach more people by doing this. So um, let's hope this uh, worked. Um, the video is going to be available as a video on demand on Twitch right after this finishes. And then uh, I'll also uh, upload it to YouTube uh, tonight. Same name, just use, uh, look for Kyle Hemp and you will find me, hopefully. <laughs> uh, and yes, um, thank you. And uh, hopefully see some of you soon. Um, I tend to do this in on a semi-regular basis, talking about favorite role-playing games maybe uh, once a month or so. Um, yeah, thanks a lot and uh, goodbye. Have a nice Sunday. <laughs>